Hey guys, Mark Holmes here, and as always, thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, this literally does not work. I just got finished doing a live stream sitting out here watching the Redskins versus the Vikings. I gotta be honest with you, when you watch football, you realize that football is really a week-to-week -week league. We saw Kirk Cousins lighting it up, the Vikings scoring all over the place, and it's 16 to nine. And the Redskins have turned the ball over like three times, and yet the Vikings only have 16 points. You know, I I'm sorry, I'm not scared of the Vikings. But you realize that any team can play great one week and terrible the next. It's just a matter of which team is going to show up. I'm hoping that from now on that our Cowboys realize after that Jet loss that we play with a sense of urgency like we did against the Eagles because we looked at that and said, listen, everything's on the line here. You've got to play that way every week. There are no give me games in the NFL. You don't show up, anybody can beat you. So I don't fear Minnesota as much as I did before because Minnesota, you remember Kirk Cousins had started off where everybody was like, you need to just release that guy. He's a straight up bum. He's worthless. Then all of a sudden, you have people saying, Kirk Cousins is better than Dak Prescott, even though he's never beat Dak Prescott. So it's up and down Jekyll and Hyde. So now all of a sudden, it's kind of like, what team are they really? And you really wonder that about any team, because there's very few teams other than New England and you could say New Orleans that have just played consistently lights out. Everybody else has had good games and bad games. And so it really comes down to who can stay healthy and who gets on a roll at the end. So when you say that the Cowboys have no chance, I can't honestly say that. I, I literally, I don't know how anybody can honestly say that because you don't know what you don't know. Now, as far as the Michael Bennett situation, uh, the more I think about it, the more I like what we did with that. Seventh round draft picks very rarely make your team. There are a few that are in the Hall of Fame, but more chances than not, it's not really somebody that's going to make it. I don't think our last four have made the team. So what you gave up a conditional seventh round pick, it's not much. Now Michael Bennett has been on now four teams in three years. He went from Seattle, got a ring with them and everything else. He was under Chris Richard. So I can best believe that the Cowboys talked to Chris Richard and said, hey, what do you think about this move? What do you think about this guy on the line? Now, he's about 275 pounds. He can play anywhere on the line. But I think they'll be using him on defensive tackle because he is a guy that can get to the quarterback. Now, on this season, he's got two and a half sacks. I believe last year with Philadelphia, he had eight and a half sacks. I take eight and a half sacks from the defensive tackle. I'll take that any time. Now, what's interesting is, is he's got two and a half sacks and five tackles on the year. And you, on the outside, you look at that and say, well, his production must be going down. He must not, you know, he's 33 years old. He must not be playing well. Well, the first game, he played 33 snaps. After that, his time, he got less and less and less and less time. And eventually he got put um, on suspension for a game because he got into an argument with his position coach about playing time. He wants to play. And I don't know that he ever fit in with the culture in New England. So he had two and a half sacks on limited playing time from the defensive tackle position. So I don't know that it's about ability. You put him in the rotation with Rod Marnelli and everything else, he can be a guy that can definitely get a push. When you think about him now being with New England, he knows a few things about New England. He also knows a few things about Philadelphia. And you look at that and say, you know what? He might be a little bit mad at Philadelphia for trading him to New England and maybe wants a little revenge against those guys. And you know what, he might be a little bit mad against New England for not playing him. 
You know, it's kind of like the ex-girlfriend syndrome. You want to make sure when she sees you that she regrets breaking up with you. You know, that you got this fine lady over here on your shoulder that you're looking good. You know, you lost a couple of pounds. You got your hair done a little bit better. You want to make that person jealous. So from that standpoint, you kind of like that. And let's be honest. We need more from the three technique. We need a better push. We need more pressure. Because what quarterbacks hate more than anything else is pressure coming at your face. You know, when you have pressure on the outside, you can step up in the pocket. You can make that move. You can take off. But see, when you get a guy or you get a couple of guys that are pushing in the middle there, now you got to be worried about those defensive ends that are coming around out here. All of a sudden, you feel like you're in the trash compactor in Star Wars where you got no place to go. And that means i got to hurry up and get rid of this ball, which means sometimes you're throwing that ball before you want to. If that guy's in your face, sometimes that ball is tipped or your hand is touched as you're swinging through. And that creates turnovers. And if you got that guy that can take that push up the middle, there's only so many offensive linemen that can go around. You can't double-team DeMarcus Lawrence. You can't double-team Robert Quinn as well. And you can't double-team Michael Bennett at the same time. Somebody's going to get to that quarterback. And if you do that, then your cornerbacks, your safeties, those guys are going to be able to do better because they're not having to block and defend for as long. I'm telling you. That's actually a pretty good move, pretty wise move that don't doesn't tie you up for the future. He's basically, uh, I think his salary for this year is $1.7 million. You have him committed through the next season. It's $7 million the following year. You got little to risk and little to lose on that one. The only thing that you worry about is, is he a cancer in the locker room? He is kind of mouthy. He has had a problem with his position coach in New England. So that's the only concern that I would have. But then again, maybe what this defense needs is somebody who's a little bit edgy. Somebody who can kind of lead. Somebody who can show you that ring. And I think having Chris Richard there as his coach is a good thing too. Time will tell. Now the question is, are the Dallas Cowboys finished? Or will they be looking for somebody else? Don't know on that one. But what I do know is I got to be out of here early in the morning to get ahead of traffic. So I am going to take my lazy bones. Or should I say dead bones? They ain't lazy. I'm a lot of things, but lazy ain't one of them. Take my dead bones to bed. Well, thank you guys for sharing this day with me. I appreciate it. But right now, I'm going to bed without you. It's time to turn out the lights. This party is over, and I am tired. Oh. I worked hard. Talk to you guys. Didn't really have a chance to work on doing anything better here on YouTube. But I'm going to go work on being a better husband. How about that? I'll see you guys soon. Don't let the bed bugs bite.